Hello everybody and welcome back to Skip Allen Paints and the YouTube channel of Skip Allen. Well, I hope you watched the previous video which was called Tips and Tricks Corel Painter 2015 Wet Watercolor. That's That told you everything you need to know about how to work with a couple of brushes that I'm going to give you and about um, how to use paper and flow maps to your advantage when working with very wet watercolor. Okay, so let's try a painting with those brushes. Now, I'm going to go over the workspace again for you. Notice that it's very clean. That's because I'm using window, arrange palettes, and I'm using the simple arrangement. Actually, I'm using simple watercolor 2x screens, which means that uh, some of my items, some of my panels and uh, custom palettes would be on another screen. Uh, normally when I'm working with you guys, I bring everything down here so you can see it. But when I work by myself, that's not the case. So I want to give you more of an idea of how I really work. Okay, so what are we going to do here? Well, the first thing we're going to do is look at this image that I have opened. It's very narrow and long. If I go up to Canvas Resize, you'll see that it is six. 0.25 inches wide and 17 inches long and it's only has a resolution of 100 ppi now that resolution is very important it, you can make your sizes bigger uh, as long as you stay at 100 ppi and try not to get over a total size of about 10 megabytes now the reason for that is watercolor brushes are very very slow to render they are memory intensive, and if you've got an average computer, it may take 10, 15, 20 minutes for the brush to uh, render. So it makes for an unpleasant experience. But if you have a very fast computer, uh, they'll render in a reasonable amount of time. But if you go up to 300 PPI or something like that, forget it. I mean, you're talking about a week. Uh, for it to render. So don't do that. You can always increase your resolution later, but if you if your size, I mean this one at 6 by 17 is really kind of a neat size, and I don't think I would make it any bigger, and I would print it as is, and 100 ppi would be fine for printing. Watercolor has soft uh, edges to begin with, so I don't think it'll make much difference to the final product. I don't know now, I don't print a lot, so uh, I'm not the expert there. But for painting comfortably, you want to keep that resolution low. Okay, so we've talked about that. Now, if I want to see my uh, layers panel, I have a little button over here in the command bar. That's what this is called, and this is the simplified um, toolbar. Now, the, I, I have my um, brush selector, I couldn't think of the name. I have my brush selector up here so you can see it because it shows the name of the brush that I'm working with. I don't normally have that open. I just work over here with the brush variant list and the category list. But uh, And I also have open the... Uh, property bar because I do utilize that from time to time. So even if I don't have the brush selector open, I usually do have the property bar open. Okay, so I'm going to open up the layers panel. There you go. We've got a canvas layer going and that's all. And I want to set up this image and get it ready to paint. And in order to do that, I like to have um, a um, paper kind of look. I want, I want the, the image to actually look like watercolor paper. So what I'm going to do is open up my paper panels. Oops, that didn't work. Let's try that again. Window panels, paper panels. There we go. Okay, now my paper panels, I have them docked with flow map and flow map libraries, paper and paper libraries they are all together. Okay. Um, I also like to open up my uh, advanced brush controls, but that's a toggle. You can open it here 
and close it back and forth. So I don't always keep it open. I'm probably going to keep this open for your benefit so that you can see uh, what it looks like, at least uh, right now for the beginning one. Okay, so in order to make uh, this look like paper, I'm going to select a paper, and I've selected watercolor test paper too, and I will make that available to you. The standard settings for any paper would be 100% scale, 100% uh, paper contrast, and 50% brightness. But for my purposes and the size of this document, I want the scale to be about 35%, the contrast to stay at 100, and the paper brightness to drop down to about 20%, which is going to make this fairly dark. Okay, so I want to add a layer. And after that layer is added, I'm going to grab my paint bucket tool. I'm going to, I need to see what color I'm working with. So let's open up our color panel. There we go. And I, I'm going to move this over a little bit and this over a little bit so they're not uh, hiding one another. I want to switch to white which uh, pure white is 255 for all three uh, of those. You know what, I just realized I was in hue saturation. I want to be actually in RGB. That's where I normally work. So I want to be 255, 255, and 255. So again, that I'm at, in pure white. Okay, I'm going to take my paint bucket tool and fill this layer with white. And you can see it fill the layer uh, with white. Now I want to take this back to, to black and I just drag zeros all the way down across and I get black. Okay, so I want to go up to select, auto select, and when auto select opens you normally will see using image luminance. You want to click on the down arrow and select paper and then say OK. And what that's going to do is give you marching ants based on, or a selection based on the currently selected paper. OK? So now that we've got black selected, I want to go to Edit, Fill, and Fill with Current Color, and say OK. Now that filled that with black. Now I can use Control or Command D and that gets rid of the marching ants. I want to come back over here and click on my layer adjuster tool. See this little white line? That happens to me frequently. It's because I've jiggled the paper or, or that layer somehow or another. If I'm on my layer adjuster tool, then I can use my arrow keys to move that layer. And I'll just type one arrow key to the left, and that took care of the problem. So now I want to lock the layer so it won't move again. I also want to change the composite method of the layer from default, which would be opaque, to gel or multiply. I like to use gel, but that's because I don't go back and forth to Photoshop very often. If you go back and forth to Photoshop, you probably want to use multiply because Photoshop reads multiply and it doesn't read gel. Okay, so I've changed it to gel, but, and so anything that happens on the canvas layer or any layer beneath this layer, I would be able to see. But it's so dark gray, it would really affect the color a lot. So I want to reduce the opacity, and I've learned from experience that about 15% is where I want to be. Somewhere between 15, 10 and 15% usually works. And if I come over here and click on the zoom in, we can zoom in and see that I have a nice paper texture set up there. Okay, so now we're ready to begin painting, and I will stop here and start a new video uh, for you to see the painting process. Okay, talk to you in the next video. Bye-bye.